Bonsoir Hans, félicitations pour la, la victoire. J'avais une question sur la programmation, euh, notamment des night sessions. Je sais que c'est un sujet qui vous tient à cœur. Demain aura lieu la septième night session dans le tableau masculin. Toujours aucune euh, pour, les, pour les dames. Il restera quatre jours après. Qu'est-ce que ça vous inspire et qu'est-ce que vous aimeriez dire ou répéter Parce que je sais que vous l'avez déjà fait à la direction. Euh, c'est triste, évidemment. J'aimerais bien qu'on qu qu montre beaucoup plus de, de matchs de femmes. Évidemment, je... Comme, comme j'ai dit l'autre fois, je rentre et j'essaie je, d'ouvrir la, la télévision. Il euh, y a forcément plus de, de matchs d'hommes que, que femmes. On essaye de, de parler. Euh, on a vu l'autre fois le match exceptionnel de, de Naomi et de, de Iga. Euh, voilà, ce n'est pas dans mon contrôle de, de dire quel match ça va être. J'aurais aimé voir Paola et Arena, c'est sûr. Euh, ça sera aussi un match exceptionnel. Mais bon, ils décident et, euh, et voilà, euh, moi, je continue à parler, je continue à vraiment euh, faire du buzz, comme, comme beaucoup de gens disent. Et j'espère que ça va changer parce que euh, je, je sens que le tennis féminin, il est vraiment bien en ce moment. Merci. Merci à vous. Oui, on se... bon, ça a encore été une grosse bataille aujourd'hui. Euh, match très plaisant à regarder pour le public, pour les, pour les suiveurs. Vous avez mis beaucoup de variations dans, dans votre jeu. Euh, C'est quelque chose qui est improvisé Ça se décide au, au moment, là, euh, sur chaque coup Ou vous récitez vos, vos gammes enfin, Racontez-nous un petit peu ce qui se passe dans, dans la tête, euh, comment vous décidez d'un coup ou d'un autre euh, en fait, j'ai joué une joueuse qui, euh, qui joue très bien, qui a un très bien touché, une gauchère qui forcément voit les angles mieux que des droitières. Et euh, ce n'était pas évident de, de la jouer une quatrième fois, sachant qu'elle me connaît très bien. Et à chaque fois que j'essaie je, de faire une amortie, elle commence à courir directement au filet. Et euh, si je slice, elle prend volée. Donc euh, à un certain moment, j'étais obligée de changer. De change, de changer tactiquement euh, mon jeu. Et, euh, et voilà, des fois, je prends la décision au moment où la balle sort de la raquette de la joueuse pour voir ce que je, je peux faire. Euh, C'est dur de prendre la décision avant parce qu'on ne sait pas si la balle elle, elle sera forte ou pas. Mais euh, euh, voilà, au moment important, euh, j'ai essayé de vraiment de garder la balle et de ne pas donner des fautes directes. Et euh, je pense que ça, ça a vraiment bien marché, même si des fois, j'ai pris le, le risque. Mais euh, des fois, que ça paye après. Bien. Non, mais sur la suite euh, du tournoi, forcément, euh, de se retrouver en huitième de finale, euh, est-ce que ça ouvre des perspectives, euh, forcément enfin, on se met déjà à rêver un petit peu je, je suis croyante. Euh, je crois euh, que je pourrais tout faire. Euh, J'ai commencé ce tournoi euh, joué match par match parce que je ne veux pas me projeter vraiment à la finale. Euh, J'aimerais bien voir comment ça se passe. Mais, mais voilà, je, je suis une rêveuse. Euh, ça, je le dis tout le temps et, et j'y crois vraiment. Donc, euh, euh, je vais commencer et recommencer à jouer match par match parce que c'est une deuxième semaine, c'est une autre semaine pour moi et j'espère que ça marchera. Hi, Hans. Uh, two questions for you. What, the first one is, is that the best you've played this year? I mean, I played two matches this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, yes. One of my uh, best matches um, because... I mean, I've played really well in Abu Dhabi as well against Emma. I, I liked the way I played there. And uh, I think I also pulled out some good wins in Madrid as well. But um, pretty, I think it's one of the best matches uh, definitely I've played in this year. Uh, my second question is, uh, I watched your documentary uh, that Thank you produced. You. And I uh, very much enjoyed it. Um, gave a real insight into, well, what you went through last year. I know that you're rebuilding at the moment and trying to find your best form and get through these tournaments to the latter stages. I just wondered if you're able to do that, if you're able to get to the latter stages of a Grand Slam again, do you feel that you have learned something from the process you went through last year that, that would help you in that position if you were in it again? 
I mean, f for sure. I, w I would say uh, I'm doing two things. I'm rebuilding, uh, definitely, but also not everything that I learn or I have in me, it's, it's completely gone. It's still there, but it's still like uh, helping me be the player that I am today, uh, be the player that can pull off some matches like this and still continue to believe in myself and be patient because I think this year has been much harder than last year. But again, uh, I play three finals. I, I'm sure I, I learned one or two things from, from playing these finals. And uh, if, if I play the fourth one, I, I would definitely uh, try to do much better than I did before. And uh, I have some ideas because, you know, I, I sometimes I sleep at night and I only think about what I should have done uh, uh, differently. And I'm, mentally, I'm, I'm learning a lot and I'm seeing myself as, OK, if I had to play the match again, what I do differently different and what I should do and I think I'm evolving a lot and even my team is noticing that which is something that it's uh, making me happy and uh, uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is be less tough with myself because I've been doing that a lot and without realizing it and uh, having you know uh, people from outside telling me this um, did help me a lot. Uh, hi Ons, um, apart from winning what's important for you heading into the second week of a slam? Um, just bring out, I'm reminding everyone that I'm still here, you know, <laughs> I, um, uh, it's, um, it's also, uh, nice to prove for myself because I, you know, I've been in a bad place, uh, for, uh, months, uh, trying to get back and gain back my confidence. But again, to be in the second week, it's, it's really important for me and for the hard work that I did, uh, recognizing that, uh, not everything that I was doing just, um, uh, just like that. Hi, Ons. Just picking up on some of the, the tough times that you've, you've been through. It's great to see you obviously feeling so much better. The whole Minister of Happiness tag, does that, does that make it harder when you are feeling rough? Almost like pressure. Everybody expects you to always have a smile on your face, always be kind of lifting up everybody else around you. What's that like when you're not feeling like that? Well, I mean, I feel like it's, um, I, I, I didn't think about like, if I am the minister of happiness, I need to be 24 seven, you know, happy, you know, which is, uh, which is wrong. And I feel like it, it's, it's wrong and I'm sending the wrong message as well, you know, and I, what I want to always say and, uh, is I, I get angry, I get sad and I accept these feelings and it's okay to do that. And I think a couple of times I said, it's not a, a happy life all the time. No, I would be lying to everyone else and lying to myself, obviously. Uh, for me is to be uh, real to myself, real to you guys. And um, um, I'm, I, I cry all the time. I'm, uh, I can be happy, but what I wanna uh, show kind of, because I feel like sometimes a smile could change uh, someone's day. You know, I can be feeling sad, but someone, you know, make a nice comment or tell me something nice, it would completely change my day. So I try to do the same, you know. If somebody gives me anger or sadness, I try to, to you know, transfer that into a good thing. Minister of Kindness, maybe. Uh, we need that in the world, especially right now. <laughs> Hey, Ons, you play with so much flair and so much personality on the court. How important is it for you to still have that freedom to play that way from your team so you can enjoy these high-pressure atmospheres at, at Grand Slams? From my, my team? Oh, sorry, I didn't get the, the Yeah, so part. for your team to allow you to play with that freedom and flair. For my team to allow me? Oh, they will be fired if I don't. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean listen, uh, I have a different game. Um, I, I think um, my my character as as a, as a woman here is like I want to be free. I want to do whatever I want. I usually hate it when they try to like put me in a space and not let me do my thing because I feel like I am a creative person. I am I intuitive, you know. When I play, uh, don't tell me don't do that drop shot, you know, but teach me how to do the drop shot. Like uh, that's something I want to learn, and that's something I, I want a lot of coaches to know. Is not to kill the creativity in the player, but also you know teach them how to develop that. And me, I try always to tell my team, let me, let me do whatever I want, let me do what I want, because I feel like it's really um, important to be myself on the court. That's what I play the best. That's why how I shout and you know how I become vocal. Sometimes I have a hard time to even scream, come on, because I, I don't feel very, very nice on the court. But you know, today was even much better and I felt really free on the court. 
Hi, Hans. Um, I just wanted to ask you, tomorrow, uh, Bedosta and Sabalenka are playing each other and they're kind of super close off the court. How do you find that dynamic when you have to play someone who you, you know, might be really close with off it, but then on it, you've got to sort of change and go from, you know, being friendly to just being ruthless and trying to win? I think that uh, maybe uh, a lot of people, they don't understand about me. They think because I'm friendly with everyone outside that I'm going to be, again, friendly, you know, on the court, which for me, it's completely different because we are all... Um, competitors, we are all like uh, champions, you know, on on the court. So um, it's it's. Uh, I think <laughs> Paula and Arena will kill each other tomorrow. I guarantee that. You know, I've seen them playing so many times. They're super friendly outside, but when they step step on the court, it's it's something different. It's not whoever is is better is gonna win. And it's like, you know, it's like bring it on. You know, like show me what you got and uh, l let's see how how it's gonna go. But you know, obviously. Obviously, it's going to go in like a lot of respect and um, I think sportsmanship because it's really important to have that. But um, um, I mean, I played arena so many times and I don't think she's going to be nice with me, you know. So I'm actually looking forward to see that match. Uh, bonsoir, Hans. Félicitations. Oh, yeah. Hello, Hans. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned more kindness in the world. I read about some kids in uh, Gaza. Mm -hmm. I analyze and own Sheba. Uh, they didn't have uh, basic needs. They didn't have TV, uh, internet, or anything. And they're still trying to find a way to watch on Sheba. What do you say to them? Um, yeah, I'm uh, pretty sad to, to see the news uh, every day. And I honestly try not to be on the social medias because uh, it's horrifying video what's happening in, in Gaza right now. I, um, I wish the world could speak more because it's really unfair what's happening. Um, these kids, women, men uh, suffering this. We are in 2024 and it's uh, very sad to see that um, uh, a lot of like uh, countries are si silent about it. So um, I'm trying to send the great energy, helping as a WFP ambassador, trying to help as much as I can, but definitely it makes me very sad and, and angry to see that nothing is moving and, and then it, nothing is really happening. So I wish peace in, in Gaza and um, I wish you know more people speaking about this.